Yo, what's up with y'all, man? I hope you're doing good. If you're new and you're a fan of the NBA, subscribe to this channel. So let's get straight into it. It's like it's mini May, high tech four, renegade, 24, number eight, coach fade away. All this is 11 grade, still in school, let them hate. To continue this NBA draft marathon that we've been on, I figured that, you know, I ought to throw in a ranking video in here too. So that is exactly what we are going to do. But before we go on, I of course got to plug. Plug in the new Fuego, the fire that I told you guys about in my last video. If you mess with the design and you want to cop one yourself and support me, go ahead and cop. Do your thing. I'm going to leave, best believe, I'm going to leave links everywhere all around the place. Enough of all that, let's just hump right in. Did I just say that? Let's just get to the vid. Ranking players is something us fans love to do because it lets us know where certain players stand from the NBA world's point of view. In this video though, since it is based on college players, they haven't even gotten a whiff of that fresh NBA air just yet. I'm gonna be ranking these guys based off of a, a combination of things, mostly relying on potential though, and just how good I, once again, I think they could be in the NBA. Oh, and uh, also, just a quick side note, since the league is currently in a state of flux, you know, people are constantly changing positions. Some of these wings on this list will be flip-flopping positions once they enter the league. You know, guys like Zon Williamson, DeAndre Hunter, Derek Culver, and etc. and etc. Just keep that in mind and just take it with a grain of salt. So first off, we gotta start this list off with the PGs. This shouldn't really be too hard at all because there's only gonna be three point guards who are going to be selected in the lottery this year. The number one ranked PG being John Morant. He checks off 90% of the things that you'd want out of your starting star point guard in the league today. He has a good shot. He can create effortlessly off of the dribble. He has great natural pass first instincts. He's explosive and athletic. And his swagger on the court in terms of play style is just unmatched with any other guard in this draft. Reminiscent of John Wall, Damian Lillard, and even a young D. Rose. And some could say Westbrook as well. The man just has an energy and aura to him in his game that separates him from every other point guard in the draft. I have Darius Garland ranked number two amongst the top three point guards in this draft because I feel like his style of play is really appealing to high level NBA offenses today. And then I have Kobe White at third. Coming in at number four is that man Carson Edwards. Now, he was pretty much just a regular old low-key prospect to the NBA world until his recent March Madness run that he had. The man was literally a walking flame on the court, giving every defender inside the business, dropping every single person off with his outrageous jumper. He is a player who could either be a really good sixth man, maybe seventh man on a team, or he could even somehow surpass those expectations later down the line, of course, in his career. At number five on my list, I have Shamori Pons. He's a dynamic dynamic saucy scorer who has a chance to do great things in the league. Those are my top five point guards in the NBA draft. I wonder how many people are already pissed in the comments. Hopefully not many. But uh, to be honest, if you are pissed, I'm not gonna let that stop me. We're gonna keep this thing going and shift our focus to the shooting guards in this year's draft. Number one ranked, <laughs> you guessed it right, Jared Culver, if you know him. His well-roundedness and Swiss Army knife-like ability on the court sets him far apart from any other two-guard, quote-unquote, in this draft. Now, because of his versatility and size, depending on which team he gets drafted to, he could either remain at the two or easily play the three spot. He's a player who a lot of people sleep on. But I feel like, actually, I know that that's going to slowly change as his NBA career starts to progress. Ranked number two on my list is Romeo Langford. Romeo is an intriguing prospect because he played the entire year with a torn thumb ligament. He has really no other option but to shoot poorly during his college year. But while taking that into consideration, you know, I'm not even sure if these scouts are using that as a valid excuse because this man wasn't even a great shooter when he played high school ball. His potential nevertheless though is undeniable. Ranked number three is the cousin of Shai Gilgis Alexander, Nikhil or Nikhil, 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 Alexander Walker. Again, one of the most slept on wings in this draft who could easily end up being just as good or maybe even better than a few of these wings that will be taken in the lottery. Defensively, he's annoying and doesn't know how to mind his own business. That trait right there could turn him into one of the best defensive guards in the league one day. He's also a good shooter too. I feel like Alexander is just a really trustworthy player to surround your star player around. Ranked number four on my list is Kevin Porter 
Jr. By far one of the most flashiest eye-catching guards in this draft. This dude has serious moves and can attack his defender in a multitude of ways. Due to how deep his duffy is, this man has hella dance moves stuffed in his bag. He is one of those. He's a lefty and he is a lethal offensive presence. Now the thing that I realized about him though is that Man, his shot is low-key hideous. My man says a little bit of Lonzo going on in his shot. Just look at that clip. Look at it. I don't even know how that's possible because my, my man, he's a lefty. And he is currently a garbage free throw shooter in college. I can see that along with a couple other things possibly holding him back from reaching his full potential in the league. Ranked at number five is Tyler Hero. Now I just ranked Tyler at number five. Oh, my bad. That was disgusting. Let me stop that. Anyways, I ranked him at number five, but I don't say that with too much confidence. Because in the league, he could easily be much more productive than a few of these guys I just named before. His combination of shooting and being a facilitator on the low and a hard work on defense is going to take him a long way in the league. He's for sure one of the most safest picks in this draft. Now, onto the three spot, the small forward side of things in this video. The number one ranked small forward on this list is RJ Barrett. RJ Barrett is the only right answer. He has his flaws, but even with those concerns, he still outshines his peers by a lot in his position. Ranked number two is that man, DeAndre Hunt. He's a sealed D, a guarantee to be one of the best defenders in the draft. He's big, lengthy, mobile, strong, and switchable. And also, his shot is A1. I'm talking cash money. He might not be a star, but he is for sure at least going to be a damn good role player throughout his career in the league. Ranked number Three on my small forward list is Cameron Reddish. Upside, upside, and upside. That is why many put so much stock into Cam Reddish. Because of what he has the potential to be, not what he is now. Ranked number four is North Carolina's Cameron Johnson. Super solid player with a super solid shot. He's going to be in the league for years. And he's going to be one of the better rookies to come out of the draft too because of how developed he is already. The man is 23 years old. Coming in at number five on this list is Keldon Johnson. He's a player who could develop into a really good role player on a good contending team one day. His potential to me at least heavily relies on what team he gets drafted to and whether or not they're known to have a good culture going on and a good player development system in place too. On to bigger and better things, we're going to be looking at the bigger picture. By continuing this vibe worthy video, leave a like if you haven't already and also let me know that you're still watching if you are. But anyways, by continuing with the power forwards, number one is Zion Williamson. Next. Ranked number two is Brandon Stop Disrespecting Me Clark. The perfect modern day four who can attribute to winning basketball day one as soon as he steps foot on the court. Ranked number three is Sekou Dumbaya. He's the opposite of Brandon in terms of trajectory. It's going to take him some time to really reach his potential and attribute to winning basketball. In three to four years though, we could be looking back at this draft, scratching our heads and wondering why he didn't end up being a top five pick. Or we could be asking ourselves, why was he even in the lottery in the first place? Cause I mean, that's just how it be sometimes. Ranked number four is PJ Washington. PJ is a very slept on overlooked player. He's been in college for two years now and he's drastically improved his overall game. That decision to remain in college for another year is going to do him justice. And it could be the reason why he ends up being a top 10 player out of this draft. When it's all said and done. The fifth ranked powerful forward on this list is Rui Hachimura. Now Rui is actually ranked higher than most of these guys on this list. I worry for him though defensively and I also worry about the potential teams that could land him. The fit just may not be right for him but nevertheless he's still a great player. His transition offense ability to shoot with that smooth stroke is gonna do him well in the league for sure. Last yes but certainly not least in this ranking video is the center's position. Coming in at number one is the best center in this draft. I don't care. Goga Bidatse. Because of the lack of coverage and exposure of his name and game, we always tend to look at the Bobos and the Jackson Hayes of the world. Those two guys have been force fed, thrown in our faces, shoved down our throats by these mainstream analysts as the two best bigs in this draft when I feel like that's just simply not true. And in fact, I'm not gonna lie, deep down, I believe that they may be submit once they enter the league. Compared to the 6'11", well-rounded, all-around prospect to Golgot Bidatse, every flaw that you see, quote-unquote, on the top two bigs in this draft, Jackson Hayes and Bobo, he excels at and then some. Many do not know about him yet, and that's okay. My man just won another MVP. Why did I even mention that? I don't even know why, but actually, I do know why. I just wanted to flex. I just want one thing from you, okay? Some of you. 
Do not act stupid and act like I didn't try to warn you about this dude right here once he enters the league and starts killing you. And outperforms every other big in this draft. He is number one, and it ain't close. Number two is Bobo. Even though, yes, I did say that Bobo was going to be mid in the league, his potential is still overwhelming. It is undeniable. You can't say nothing about that length and discredit his shot. Ranked at number three is Jackson Hayes. There's nothing really too special or intriguing about him at all. He's just a basic big man that every team in the league would love to have. Ranked number four is Bruno Fernando. Man, I'm not even going to lie to you guys either. I always have to keep it 100, 1000 with you. This dude right here could also end up being better than Jackson Hayes and Bowl Bowl too. He's a really solid player and I can see him being a starter one day in his career. Career. Last but not least, ranked number five is Jonte Porter. Actually, nah, scratch that. Let's just have a little fun. Taco Fall. Man, I ain't gonna lie, I love tacos. I'm kind of hungry too. Let me let me wrap this up so I can, yeah, let me wrap this up because I've been doing this for a little while now and I'm kind of hungry. Taco is, of course, a seven foot seven freak of nature. We like to give centers the name Big Man. No, he isn't a big man, he is a huge man who will be a defensive force in the league one day. And I'm just saying that sheerly off of his length. This is the end of the video though, man. I really, really do appreciate you for taking time out of your spectacular, marvelous day to come over here and see what I have to talk about today. You just heard my 2019 NBA Draft rankings and I want to hear about yours too. Don't be selfish, share out them thoughts. Before I leave, make sure you like, comment, share this video, and also make sure to follow me on Instagram and on Twitter as well. But um, until then, I'll get right with you. No way, no way, yeah. when I couldn't get a play, yeah. No hope, I ain't have a place to stay, yeah. I got the work, made it serve, free the way, yeah. So my girl who never thought